Oh, Dora, no, it's a cult. It's a cult. It's a secta. It's a secta. It's a secta. It's a cult. It's Scientology. See how they're, they're, they're not laying that up. They're not saying Scientology. Scientology. It's a cult. Secta. No. Scientology. See that. Scientology. Google that. See, they don't light that up. They don't want you knowing about that. It's a cult. If they get you a cult, a secta, a harem, it's a, it's, it, it's the devil. It's, really? Yes. No good. Don't. No good. They just want to, they say free personality tests. Mm -hmm. They get you in there and they want you to fill information about you mm -hmm. and they're going to try to convert you to a cult. Oh, uh, here we to go. A cult? Yes. What cult means? Uh, here we go, the cops. You're looking for them? No, for, for me, because I'm trying to stop people from going in there. Ah. It's a scam. So here, here come the cops. I got to pull out my other phone and start recording. I hope other people have been recording too. Yeah, look at this. I'm gonna tell you, you go in there, you come on out, don't talk to me. Just keep on going. Okay, hi, hello, my name is Lauren. I am a American Jew. I'm pro-Palestine. Um, I was a political science major in college and I have ADHD and an internet connection, which means I went down a rabbit hole yesterday um, and I'm gonna tell you guys about it. So there was an article by Haaretz that was written by Avi Scharf on October 24th, 2023. Um, and it says, um, open source intelligence shows US deploying more arms and troops to Israel, Cyprus, and Jordan. Um, what does that mean? That means arms are being airlifted to Israel and Cyprus and fighter squadrons and special forces are being sent to Jordan to then be transferred to Israel, okay? What is being sent? There are two squadrons of F-15E uh, fighter jets to Jordan. There are two squadrons of A-10 Thunderbirds to Jordan, or Thunderbolts to Jordan, and there are a Florida-based special forces to Jordan. There's also Tomahawk cruise missiles a THAAD battery and Patriot missile system being sent to Israel and Cyprus. Okay, so I started looking into those things. Um, and wouldn't you know it, the F-15 um, is manufactured by Boeing um, at the Boeing facility in St. Louis, Missouri. And it would be a real shame if, if you work at Boeing and you're like opposed to the mass indiscriminate killing of civilians, it would be a real shame if nobody showed up to work and in St. Louis, Missouri. And if you live near there, it would be a real shame if if um, some people showed up to the corporate offices, which are building 506 at the Boeing facility in St. Louis, Missouri, and told them what their plans are being used for. Um, it would be a real shame if you showed up at Boeing Berkeley East at the manufacturing plant, which is 6332 six zero james s mcdonald boulevard berkeley missouri six three one three four it would be a real shame if if nobody showed up for work tomorrow or the next day or the day after that it would be a real shame if these planes didn't didn't get made that would be really sad that would be so sad and it would be so sad if people were to protest at boeing that would be really sad if the if the corporate heads were confronted with the consequences of their corporation's actions. That would be that would be so bad. We should not do that. Guys, don't do that. Okay? I mean it. Don't do that. We shouldn't do that. According to the government, you must not discriminate against disabled people at any stage of the recruitment process. Now let's read out some of the questions I was just asked um, in this questionnaire that I filled out for a job that I applied to. I always notice when people are upset. I frequently do things on impulse. I usually notice when I am boring people. Entering a room full of people makes me uncomfortable. People describe me as unconventional. Little things sometimes bother me a lot. I sometimes feel like I have special talents and abilities. It doesn't take me long to figure out what makes someone tick. It is hard for me to act naturally when I am with strangers. I'd rather work with facts than people. Now, some of these might be more disguised than others. But these are all things that I have identified as being 
traits that I would attribute to my ADHD or autism that would affect how I would answer those questions. Very specifically, I always notice when people are upset and um, I usually notice when I am boring people, they are asking how good you are at reading other people, which is, for me, directly impacted by my autism. I frequently do things on impulse and I often do things on the spur of the moment, for me, are both directly impacted by the fact I have ADHD. I don't think that's going to help with my employment. I don't think that they are asking these questions because they would love to have someone who can't tell when people are upset or because they would love to have someone who can't tell when they're boring people. Um, That seems to me like discrimination. Don't think I'm reading too much into it. I don't think that's okay. Um, I don't, I think these are called like uh, psychometric testing and they seem quite common in uh, job applications. How is this allowed? Family, we lost three more black trans folks. Join me in speaking their names. Skylar Harrison was 30 years old, was found in a Washington DC park. The police say that it was an overdose. Her family says that the way her body was found, it was a hate crime. Skylar Harrison, we speak your name today. China Long, a 30 year old black trans woman was found murdered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The police do have a suspect in custody. She was a choreographer and her family says that this suspect has stole a piece of their joy. China Long, we speak your name today. And Dominic Dupree, a 25 year old gender non-conforming entrepreneur out of Chicago, was sitting in their vehicle and ended up being fatally shot. There are currently no suspects and no one has been arrested. Dominic Dupree, we speak your name today. With all the hate that goes on on this app like all the time, I'm kind of surprised that I'm the first person saying this. But the whole, why would he say that? Is he acoustic? Comment trend that's going on right now is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt the least funniest shit I've ever seen on this app. And there have been some fucking, some crazy unfunny comment trends. The fucking Zepatha shit? Oh my god, bro, I'm getting fucking flashbacks. Yeah, that's not what you're looking at there. What you're looking at there is a perfect example of what we call kuariro, 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 kuariro. To have given yourself over, to have been consumed, swallowed up, to be lost to the, I would say, dark side, but it's actually blindingly not dark like you know ones who wear save the children shirts to go to a rally to support israel who's killed over four thousand children just in the last four weeks in gaza you kind of got to think about if candace owens had a church that's what we're looking at here this is the same crowd that likes to you know Roll with Julian Batchelor, one of the most high-profile, extreme right-wing racists. And this is all you need to see to understand it, really. It's the Colonizer US flag being flown by that same group in support of the Israeli Colonizer state as it walks past the Palestinian counter-protest. So make no mistake, by and large, Maori support Palestine. And you'll know when it's proper Maori indigenous to indigenous support because uh we won't be flying colonizer flags i can't believe i have to make this video but the world has to know they have to know who is this Hamas is here. Uh, can you tell the very real bombs behind me? We don't know this woman. They've taken over everything. They've taken over our fuel, our medicine. The hospital hasn't had power or electricity for quite some time, actually. How can I treat and help this poor little boy now? Your gloves are clean, your mask is clean, and that's a very 
fake stethoscope you have there Allah you have to believe me obviously I'm a very real nurse who works at this hospital we literally have no clue who you are but we know you definitely don't work here how could Hamas do this to us ya Allah yeah and let me say this 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 evil twink this evil twink you have earned yourself an op for life if if he has no haters i have passed you need to go you need to come get me because i've been passed check up on me if this man has no haters because until the day that i die everything that this man does is going to be slandered by me to say that zionism is sexy or to get stickers because he got stickers that said that baby it's not giving that it never gave. It never really gave that. First and foremost, we have all seen that Zionism is sexy when you look like uh, the tethered of a great value, Ellen DeGeneres. It's wild to me. And all I know is I'm glad that Stranger Things is ending because you got some Stranger Things coming for you, baby, because your everything that you do will fail. I'm going to call that right now. I call failure onto your whole career in life because the way that this, this twink has been going really hard against Palestinians, people who are on the receiving end of something so vicious and cruel, yeah, it's up and stuck for me. You too, Timothy Chalamet. Hello everyone, welcome to part one of my presentation, colonizing countries who don't get enough credit for ruining the world and making it as miserable as it is right now. First off, we have Portugal. Not everybody knows that the Portuguese colonized Brazil, but I feel like when it comes to hating on colonizers, everyone hates on the Spanish, the French, and the British. What about the Portuguese? The Portuguese did a lot of stuff. And I also feel like people forget about Mozambique, Angola, parts of China, parts of India. They only think of Brazil. No, they were, they were in everyone else's business. Next up on the list, we have Belgium. Yeah, Belgium is kind of one of the flops of the country because not a lot of people know them. But you see all the horrible stuff going on right now in Democratic Republic of Congo? You can thank them for starting it because you might be thinking, wait, they were a colony of Belgium? No. King Leopold, look him up. He owned the country as his private property and treated the people fucking horribly. Yeah. A warning before you look up the stuff he did because the stuff he did in Congo, he's in hell right now. Just know that. And the number one enemy of the world, there's also the good old United States. Do I even have to go into this? They ruin everything. The next one might upset the European queer community. Yeah, Amsterdam is not free from criticism. I know a lot of you tend to think, oh, the Dutch colonized? They owe Suriname money. The next one might be a little controversial, but it must be said. Do I even need to explain why? Oh, okay, just making sure, just making sure. And the last one that I feel like a lot of people don't know, good old Japan. Do not let Hello Kitty and anime fool you. They created all that so that they can clean up their image. Yeah. And if you're wondering, who did Japan colonize? Ask Korea. Ask the Philippines. Ask China. You could ask anyone over there. And there's so many more. Let me know which countries you want to see in part two. Over a month now since Israel started their whole bombing campaign. Over a month now of Palestinians in Gaza living in the horrendous conditions that have been forced onto them. By people in suits and fresh haircuts and chauffeurs and expensive perfume. Where now over 11,000 people have been killed because of their decisions. But of course these are targeted and precise bombs launched with the intention to eradicate Hamas off the face of the earth. In the name of defense and safety of civilians. But I can't lie at this point it looks like they're just trying to eradicate the actual face of the earth. But remember these bombings are very accurate and they are precise. So precise in fact that they even bombed the cancer ward in a pediatric hospital. Where apparently all the 8 year old Hamas combatants undergo their weekly 
see chemotherapy sessions. Now, of course, the reason behind this is that Hamas resides in schools and hospitals and civilian areas and, and basically everywhere. At this rate, just say Hamas is everywhere. I'm sure if I look at the bottom drawer of my fridge right now, according to Israel, there's about four Hamas members uh, along with their headquarters base. People are calling for a ceasefire, not even calling for it. People are screaming for a ceasefire because the millions and millions and millions of people worldwide are seeing what's going on and they're saying this is not right. Even the president of France has called for a ceasefire. The president of France. Do you know how tapped your actions need to be for the Emmanuel Macron to turn around and be like, okay, I can't let you're moving mad. You're doing a lot. Now, a few days ago, they've instilled four hour humanitarian pauses. Four hours a day where there's just, there's a break. It's a quick break from the assault on Hamas. There's 24 hours in a day. So I, I think a more fitting headline would be 20 hours of genocide followed by a four hour humanitarian break. Because apparently the threshold to identify as a human is you just need four hours of humanity a day. The remaining 20 hours just be as demonic as you want. So yeah, let's take four hours off to be human. We're nice people, we care about humanity. And for the remaining time, just kill as many people as you want. Sorry, target Hamas, who is hiding in every possible location ever. Four hours a day to stop bombing people. That, that's less time than a school day. You can go to school, be terrorized in the morning when you arrive, and by period three, you're due for another round of bombings and murder. I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, we just want peace. We want everyone to be happy. Peace, not war. I, can't, I hear it. I agree. That would be very nice. Before the start of last month, the month before that, the year before that, and the 75 years before that, Palestinians weren't living in peace. But now it's all nowhere, but we just just want peace we don't want war and no one really cared that much when i say no one i mean the uk didn't care the united states didn't care it's just it was just palestinians not living in peace why should the us and uk governments care apparently there's not that much money to be made from caring about palestinian lives people only care about peace and happiness when it affects their version of what they define it to be but i can't like you can't pick and choose you can't be like okay this person's peace is more valuable than this person's peace so i'm gonna care about this person more than this person. or no no these people can continue suffering as long as i am living in peace and now if my peace is disturbed kenzie allow it because now chaos only becomes problematic when someone else's definition of peace has been disturbed and i can't like even if all of this goes away right now the, the israel stops dropping bombs hamas just suddenly just disappears they're eradicated they don't exist anymore what happens next now you have a whole area that was home to over 2 million people where almost half of all the housing units have been destroyed 135 healthcare facilities destroyed almost 300 educational facilities destroyed what happens next for the people in Gaza if everything stopped right now what's next for the young people that have to live there for the next 10 years of their life not having to live with the trauma that they've experienced and been forced to go through The way that Noah Schnapp is ruining his career right in front of us is wild. It's one thing to be on the supporting side of Israel, but it's another to start liking pictures and posts mocking dead children. That shit is a special type of evil. I don't see how people are still supporting this kid over all this. Stranger Things was not that good for you to lean back on that. And we know Digital Footprint is real, and we know that Netflix isn't paying residuals like that. We're watching him crash and burn. And it's no one's fault but his. It's like watching a train wreck. And even if that guy came out with an apology, I don't think most people would accept it. I can understand doing things for clout, but this is going too far. I am kind of like side-eyeing the rest of the cast for no one condemning him. Because best believe, if someone that I knew was doing some shit like that, I'm going to call them out on it. Privately and publicly. The fact that you think you can run around with me and do shit like that in public? No, you can't. It needs to be addressed. But between him and Amy Schumer, I can't say I'm surprised. People always show you who they really are one way or another. We have messages from someone who was on the grounds in Sudan, and this is a long one, and it's a heavy one, so buckle in. I have been exchanging messages with someone who was on the grounds in Sudan, and she has text messages that she wants me to read to you guys. I'm going to read these words verbatim. She sent me this message starting November 6, 2023. She reached out to me first at 7.23 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. She says the following, Hey, I'm an artist from Sudan, and I've seen your TikTok about wanting to help the people in Sudan and Congo. I am currently in Al Fatihab district, which has been under siege for more than six months as RSF's chokeholds continues, preventing any supplies, food, water, medicine from entering the district with electricity and internet blackout. People are dying. 
Thank you so much for speaking up about Sudan and wanting to help. I hope I can be of help too. And then I asked to share her story. I asked, you're welcome. How in the world did you find me so fast? In what ways would you like me to help? TikTok must be doing its job finally. I'm glad my message reached you. I want to make people aware of what, on what to do without blowing anyone's cover. What exact message would you like me to give out to people? And she responded, I'm honestly glad someone is finally noticing and talking about Sedan. I barely have internet here, so thank you for being our voice when we're silenced. Please keep spreading awareness. That was all of November 6th. And I sent her a message Monday at 10.05 p.m. And it said, if you can, let me know when you want me to share and I will post on my TikTok. And then I waited till the next day, Tuesday. And then I said, how can I help you directly? Then she sent me a message today. This message says, hey, I'm truly sorry for the late reply, but they cut off electricity and internet again. With no food or water getting in, homes are still being shelled. We haven't eaten in days and unfortunately got too hungry like so many other families and had to leave even though the area was under siege and it's impossible to. We made it out today by a miracle. It's like we went through the lines then, which are the RSF, but there was no other choice. These people are dying. We went out at 4 a.m. and reached a better area where homes and hospitals are getting shelled, but there is a bit more food at 4 p.m. because we got stopped so many times. They did all sorts of things that I had to witness. They even hit a sick kid in his chest with their weapons that he had to crawl on the floor and no one can rescue the kid. This area was completely deserted and I won't lie, I lost hope on so many times and broke down countless times during the long journey. If they killed us right there and then, no one would have known, nor would they have been able to do anything about it. Seeing your loved ones get mistreated while being helpless and not knowing if they'll get killed right before your eyes is a feeling that I do not wish on even my worst enemies. And I said, I can get this message out. I can try to protect your identity. And then she sent me a picture and this picture shows a desert. It's like a desert and it, I can't really, I don't really know exactly what I'm looking at, but it just looks like it's pointing towards the desert and maybe there's something pointed in that direction that's um maybe the area that she left from and she said this is the only photo i could take of that area it's a gray area where there is no army or rsf i could finally pull out my phone she then says we left our original home right before the war started because the RSF got into the area right away and we left everything behind, including my passport. And my mom is sick. She needs to leave the country for better treatment, but I would need money for the passport and transportation. I have no idea what to do and I don't think I can take another loss. I got a bit emotional writing this, but I couldn't help it. I hope you can understand and I hope anyone could help us and about helping the people of al Fetihab. I can't think of anyone trustworthy, to be honest, and there's basically no way of getting any food, no matter, because they're surrounded. So the only way is to raise awareness about the issue, raise as much awareness and let everyone know. When our voices get silenced, be our voice. I think if it got a, enough attention, then the military can get pushed into doing something about it, and that's the only way. And I said, thank you for your bravery. I'm going to act now. And then she said, thank you for listening to me. I'm absolutely traumatized after everything. I saw a couple of comments about people asking why no one is documenting what's happening in Sudan like journalists in Palestine do. And the simple answer is that people in Palestine can film freely. But if you take a single photo in Sudan, you can get shot in the head. <sighs> Thank you so much. I couldn't take any more photos, but but if I can find any, I'll send them to you immedi immediately. You heard it right there from someone who's actually living it, guys. We need to raise more awareness. Speak on this. Share this. 
share this to your story, to anything that you want to share it to, because even if you have a small account, your voice matters. That's all I have to say. And I will give you guys updates if she sends me any more messages. So I'm confused. Where are the American pro-lifers now that the children in Gaza are being obliterated by bombs? Where are y'all at? The pregnant women are being obliterated by bombs. Because here's what it's not fucking giving. It's not giving what you thought it fucking gave. Because I can see y'all, but I can't fucking hear y'all. And I got a problem with that real fucking bad. Because y'all are real comfortable sitting outside an American abortion clinic praying and crying. And screaming at people with your Bible scriptures and telling them that they're murderers. Y'all will sit in a 10-year-old rape victim's face and tell her that she's a goddamn murderer for getting a fucking abortion. Then what the fuck is this? Oh, this ain't that. That's murder, but this ain't. You're fucking kidding me. You're a goddamn hypocrite. And y'all are selective as fuck with your beliefs. Selective as fuck. Because guess what? As somebody who's pro-choice, somebody who marched these streets to fight for women to have the right to choose when Roe v. Wade got overturned, someone who led protests and stood alongside some of the most powerful women that I've ever met, I'm being louder than y'all. And I'm not pro-life. But guess what? I think that makes me pro-life. Because I care more than y'all do. So who's really pro-life? Because where are y'all at? I'm not fucking hearing y'all. And it's gross. It's disgusting. Y'all make me sick. And thank you for proving our point. We were right about y'all. Because look at y'all. Look at y'all. Just going on about your fucking days. Just chilling. And where, where are your prayers for the children in Gaza? Where's your, where's your, oh my God, that's murder. Where's that at? Where's that energy at? Because it's not there. Y'all are sick as fuck. And what makes me even, even cringe even more is that there's, there's this influencer I know who's very, very, very pro-life. And she's actually being so loud right now about what's going on in Palestine, but actually being pro-Israel. She's a Zionist. How are you pro-life? And you're using that to justify that? Are you fine? Like, that, that makes no goddamn sense. That's so, oh my God. Like, that is so stupid. Oh my fucking God. Like, y'all are insane. Oh my God. Like, do you hear the hypocrisy in, in, in every statement that I have just made? Holy shit. Stop calling for a ceasefire. No. Why would I make them so uncomfortable? Probably has to do with I want to see the United States government die in my lifetime. If anything happens to Bassan, dash your ass. I no, your whole entire ass get your gloves we squaring up. <laughs> Try it if you want to. If you touch a single eyelash on Bassan or Motaz, we squaring up. They're already welcome at my dinner table. <laughs> a feast will be provided if they make it through this. And you're trying to paint them as a terrorist? Good luck. We've seen Motaz with the babies in the car. We've seen the injured babies crying and Motaz consoling the babies. We've seen it with our own eyes. We've seen Bassan crying, drenched in tears because she was two minutes away from the hospital, almost killed. We've seen it. Your lies ain't gonna work, so you might as well square up. I want your whole ass, all of it. Just you, I want it. You might be saying, Megan, watch your language. I'm not Muslim yet, I'll go full haram. Try me, try it. Behind me is a list of names of Palestinians that's been killing Gaza since October 7th. Nobody on this fucking list made it to the age of four. Not one. So listen, I know if you fucking human, you're gonna feel somebody saying this shit. It's not complicated. Don't let nobody tell you that shit. It's not. So listen, I'm gonna give y'all something to do, all right? Cause I know I just presented y'all with an emotion. Y'all wanna do some shit with it. Go to this fucking website right now. Please. Call your reps. 
demand a fucking ceasefire. If you don't got service, take a picture, write it the fuck down, all right? That's how you go back to the names. Can y'all say free Palestine? Can y'all say free Palestine? I love y'all so much, I'm out. Here's a super horrifying fact. Did you know that the biggest exporter that India receives is from Israel? And this is all weapons. Most of it is weapons. And guess where those weapons are used? In occupied Kashmir. And Kashmir is the most militarily dense region on the planet because it's all just full of soldiers who terrorize Kashmiris every day. So yes, Kashmir and Palestine are linked Free Palestine, free Kashmir. Christian, why aren't you talking about the fact that the IDF is providing safe passage to Palestinians? From where? From the north of Gaza, which is where their homes were. Because, because it's dangerous. Because, because the IDF is about to bomb it. So it's less like they're providing them safe passage out of just the goodness of their hearts and more like the Palestinians are being forced out of their homes under the threat of death. Well, we have to get rid of Hamas, no matter who pays the price, huh? I'm ripping the runway, serving the runway, eating the runway, pump. So a PSA to all of you who are going to be calling Congress people, especially in the midst of everything happened with Rashida Tlaib being removed from Congress, please remember that when you're calling, you are probably going to be talking to an intern who is most likely unpaid and is not going to be the best person to give you a well worse response to policy and what's going on. If you actually want to talk to somebody who really does have a certain level of accountability, you want to ask for a legislative aid. And you want to ask for the legislative aid in the department of whatever you're calling about. So if you're talking about um, relation to Palestine, you want to ask for the foreign affairs legislative aid. If you're calling about something going on with land, you want to ask for the agriculture legislative aid. But please do not yell at interns because it's not fun and they're already filling hundreds of calls a day. All right. Bye. A British Home Secretary descended from Goan Indians from Mauritius and Kenya married to a Jewish husband in a government headed by Britain's first Hindu Prime Minister, himself the son of immigrants, says that multiculturalism has failed. What is she talking That's me. I have done my part. I have done my part. Uh, part in what? Sorry. Oh, I used I used the watermelon filter. I used the watermelon filter. Oh, it's a free Palestine. Uh, I mean, I I used the watermelon filter. I I used the filter. Okay. So you, you use the filter. N no, said anything. Put a song in the background and didn't even. Like, did you have you maybe been reposting stuff? Have you been reposting like Palestinian voices? Oh, you see, my, my reposter for my podcast. So it would just really mess up. It would really mess up the repost. So no, I've not done that. I mean, maybe tell your following to, like, email their MPs and call their MPs demanding a ceasefire. Because we we need a ceasefire. Okay, but I've, I've used the filter. I've used the filter with a wee song behind it. Is that, is that not enough? No. That's... No. I have the ability to remove symbols of my Judaism, like I don't wear my Star of David necklace right now. I, I took down the mezuzah from my front door. Oh.
grab an order and slap boys. Blood is everywhere. You were going to sit here and listen to every horrific account of what is happening at Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza right now, November 11th. After over a million Palestinians have been forcibly and violently displaced from the north, we have very few voices in that area. El Shifa, which has already been bombed multiple times, along with many other hospitals in Gaza, is now surrounded by Israeli snipers and tanks. Soon we may not have voices on the ground, except from the Israeli soldiers whose job it is to exterminate the Palestinian people. This is the moment we have been warning the world of. All generators are off. All power sources are out. We have 39 newborns in the incubators. Those babies are fighting against death. No one is able to move around the compound. Snipers are stationed all over the place in addition to the drones that target and kill any moving person. A few minutes ago, one of the engineering team was hit by a sniper. He was hit in the neck and was paralyzed and now he's about to die. Part of the hospital was shelled and part of the building caught fire. We fear it will engulf the whole compound. A few families tried to leave, but they were targeted. Now they are lying dead outside the hospital. We cannot get to them. We are totally stranded. We are cut off from the outside world. And above all, we are left without any medical resources. We cannot even bury the dead. Ferocious gunfire can be heard within the vicinity of the hospital. The intensive care unit received a mortar shell a few minutes ago. Blood is everywhere. On the floor, we cannot even clean it. In the past, the Israeli killing machine was killing, and this was conveyed on TV screens. Now they are perpetrating the same killing, but no one is listening. No one is watching. The whole world is standing by. We are speaking with whatever is left of my phone battery. After that, we will be silent. We are creating this. Multiple hospitals are under an orchestrated attack. Where not only healthcare workers are struggling to treat patients, but thousands of civilians are seeking refuge in. Did you hear of the incident in 2015 when a Palestinian family was attacked in the occupied West Bank? The attack was carried out by a Jewish colonial settler named Meyer Ettinger, who was the grandson of a rabbi. First, he made sure that the home was occupied, then he threw in a Molotov cocktail to set the house on fire. An 18-month-old baby named Ali Dawabshe burned to death. His parents and four-year-old brother were all taken to the hospital with severe burns. The parents died, but the brother survived. Here's where double standards become very clear. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself condemned the crime. Meyer's only punishment was 10 months detention and then partial house arrest. was later seen celebrating the death with a poster of the baby's face. Welcome back to learning all the Starbucks recipes so you don't have to spend your money at Starbucks. So you can do your boycott in peace. For context, I am on my way out of Starbucks, but before I leave, I am making sure to teach you all of the recipes. And today is all things matcha. So I'm going to start with the hot matcha latte and I'm going to do it from scratch just so you know how to do it because it's made differently. Start with your milk, 2% is standard. Then you add your matcha powder. And then you steam it, it's going to be like that. 
I would suggest kind of swishing it or even stirring it so it can start doing that. And I'll be back in a moment. All right, I'm back. I had a bunch of customers, but anyway, hot matcha gonna look like this. You just pour it in. It's that easy. Now I said in another video that there is one drink that does break the, well, two drinks technically, that does break the rules of shaking more than 10 times. Matchas are those drinks. So in here, you're gonna put milk in here. That's not enough. You'll put milk in there up to the line. Add your matcha. I realized I did not have that in screen. Anyway, add the matcha with the milk. Nice. And then you shake it and do it 20 times since it doesn't always mix in 10. I do not think I did it the full twin. Anyway, ice matcha latte, and I know I spilled it, but there you go. And the final matcha drink that people care about, actually people don't really care about this one, but this is a thing, matcha lemonade. Instead of milk, lemonade. It's that damn easy. Shake it up. Matcha lemonade. There you go.